Okay, ladies and gents, we're going to be talking about mechanisms with an initial fast step. In class, we talked today about a mechanism with a slow step initially, and it was easy to write the rate law based on that. Um, what we have here in front of us is we have a mechanism with initial fast step. So um, over our, overall, our reaction here is um, we have our overall reaction of 2NO plus Br2 yields 2NOBr. Now, they gave us two proposed mechanisms. First off, we have our first mechanism, which has a initial fast step, and then we have a second step, which is a slow. And they're telling us that experimentally, our rate law is rate equals K, NO to the second order here, and BR to the first order here. So um, let's, let's apply what we know so far and see if we can come up with some information. So first off, we always know that, that rate laws are based off our slow step. And when we look at um, our slow step here, this is our slow step, we have NOBR2 as a reactant, and we have NO as a reactant, but that doesn't match our rate law, so there must be something else at play here. And this is what's at play. Um, let's think about it this way. In our first step, we have, we, have, it's, we have NOBR2 here being produced at a very high rate of speed, and then NOBR2 is being consumed here, so it's an intermediate. So we have a really fast production of an intermediate and a really slow consumption of an intermediate. And typically what happens is we have an a, a increase in the concentration of our NOBR2, that product. And it doesn't always have to be an inter intermediate, it could be just some other product. Um, now, what will happen in this reaction is you will get this reaction begin to reverse itself. And we were going to spend a lot of time in AP Chemistry talking about reversible reactions coming soon, but this reaction does reverse itself and start. And so the NOBR2 here will start decomposing back down into Br2 and NO because it cannot be consumed fast enough and the concentration builds up too high. Okay, so how does that apply to a rate law? Well, here's how, here's how it applies. What we can do in a rate law is because this first one is listed as fast, and oftentimes they'll even list this as a fast equilibrium. And remember, equilibrium is something that has um, equal rates of forward and reverse reactions. So fast equilibrium occurs. So what we can do is we can take the product of this fast equilibrium and we can plug it in down here, but we don't plug in the NOBR2 into the slow equation. What we do plug in is the reverse of this reaction. So we're going to plug in NOBR2 into the slow step. So let's rewrite our slow step as, and we're going to, once again, we're plugging in NO plus BR2 from step one, plus we're going to plug in what was already there, NO and that decomposes it into 2NOBR, and this was our slow step. So now we can write the rate law based on our slow step. So our rate law becomes rate is equal to K. We have NO, NO, so we have NO second order, and then we have BR2 first order. So that matches our experimental rate law, and that's how we can get, a, get around that in, in kind of a simplistic way. Again, take your fast equilibrium and plug it into your slow step, and that's how that happened. Okay, let's get give you another example. Of, okay, so here is our second um, problem, and uh, we're given a balanced equation up here at the top of uh, 2H2 plus 2NO reacts to form N2 plus 2H2O there. And they're even giving us their experimentally determined rate law of rate equals K, H2, uh, first order, NO, second order. So that's what we're shooting for. And the question would ask, there's two proposed mechanisms. Which of the two mechanisms match the rate law? And so let's take a look at mechanism one. We have an initial slow, and then a fast, and then another fast. So if we have an initial slow, what we can do is we can write the rate law just straight off of the slow step, because when we have an initial slow, we write the rate law straight off the slow step. So this is going to be rate is equal to K H2 and O. And does that match the rate law? It does not match the rate law, because NO is not second order. So we've got to go on to our next proposed mechanism. And so our next proposed mechanism um, does have a slow step in step number two. And so if we write the rate law based off the slow step, rate is equal to K into O2 
H2. Um, that also does not match the rate law up here, and so we, can, we have to reject that as well. Okay, so what we're going to need to do here is we're going to go ahead and look at our fast equilibrium in our, in our first step. Now, because remember, um, this, this N2O2 is being produced here and consumed in the second step slowly, concentration builds up, this reaction reverses itself, so we have a fast equilibrium. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the products of that reverse and we're going to plug them in to um, N2O2, essentially. So we're going to create a new slow step, which would be um, 2NO, which would be the products plugged in there, plus the H2 yields the products. Um, of that slow step and let's run the rate law there and say rate is equal to NO second order H2 first order and does this match the rate law that was uh, determined experimentally at the top and let's run it up here and look and there is the rate law it doesn't matter if um, the products are out of order the N2 uh, or the NO second order was listed second no big deal first order H2, they are the same, so that matches. So this proposed mechanism is possible, and the first one has to be rejected. Okay. That's, um, that's it for, um, for uh, mechanisms, and we'll do some practice tomorrow in class.